Hello, students. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to topic four of these 3.2 notes. Um, and topic four, um, it's kind of a, a pretty short topic here, but and a random topic, but it's just a, a handful of things that are really important to, um, to point out um, when it comes to all this cell respiration stuff. And so I just want to go through that real quick, if I can choose the right slide here. Um, so uh, we've now talked about what cell respiration is and how it works and um, uh, the different parts of cell respiration and all the complicated uh, details involved of turning glucose in the presence of oxygen into CO2 and um, water and, and releasing some energy that can then be used to, to make some ATP molecules for the cell. Uh, but here are a few things to also keep in mind that you guys do need to know. Um, when we talk about cell respiration, we, um, if you guys recall, there's, there's a part of cell respiration at the beginning, glycolysis, that doesn't take place in the mitochondria. But then after that, you end up with pyruvate, who then needs to go into the mitochondria to finish up with the pyruvate oxidation and the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. All of that takes place inside the mitochondria and requires oxygen to be available and ready to, to take those electrons at the end of all of this. Um, and so a lot of times uh, uh, when we're talking about aerobic cell respiration, which is cell respiration that requires oxygen, um, we're usually talking about um, organisms who have mitochondria, and that's usually eukaryotic cells, eukaryotic organisms like us and animals and plants and fungi and protists um, who, who are made of eukaryotic cells that do have mitochondria who can definitely do aerobic cell respiration. But it's important to point out that there are prokaryotes, like bacteria, there's, there's prokaryotic cells who don't have mitochondria, they don't have any membrane-bound organelles, that can do aerobic cell respiration. Um, and this, this doesn't apply to all prokaryotes. These are special prokaryotes that are um, able to do this process of completely breaking down glucose um, using oxygen and making a lot of ATP. And they basically do all the same processes, starting with glycolysis and the pyruvate oxidation and Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. But all of that is happening without a mitochondria like they can do a lot of that without the mitochondria um and so and again this is most prokaryotes can't most prokaryotic cells can't do um aerobic cell respiration because they don't have a mitochondria um but there are some that can and the big difference is for these guys um they're still going to do all the different reactions that we went through starting with glycolysis and pyruvate oxidation and the krebs cycle which is lots of different reactions controlled by lots of different enzymes. And that's going to take place in those prokaryotic cells, even though they don't have a mitochondria. But the big, big difference is the electron transport chain, which is supposed to be on the inner membrane of the, um, the mitochondria, where those electrons get dropped off, and then ATP synthase is making ATP through chemiosmosis. But in, in these guys, these aerobic prokaryotes, that they actually have all of that machinery not in the mitochondria because they don't have one, but it's actually on their cell membrane. The cell membrane that surrounds the cell actually has the electron transport chain and ATP synthase to accomplish that last part called oxidative phosphorylation, which takes place in our mitochondria, but they actually do this on their cell membrane. So this picture kind of shows you like, okay, in our mitochondria, this stuff, the electron transport chain and ATP synthase, that's located on the inner membrane. But in these special aerobic prokaryotic cells, we call them aerobic prokaryotes, they, some of these guys are special and they have all this machinery on their, on their cell membrane. And so on their cell membrane, they're pumping out hydrogen ions literally out of their cells, producing a high concentration of hydrogen ions on the outside of the cell and a lower concentration inside the cell. And those hydrogen ions, they want to diffuse back into the cell through ATP synthase, which is going to power the production of ATP. But it's all very similar to what is happening in our mitochondria. It's just happening on their cell membrane. So just know that these exist. These are special prokaryotes that are able to do this. Um, and uh, the big difference is that the electron transport chain and ATP synthase are located on their actual cell membrane that surrounds the cell and not in the mitochondria because they don't have one. Um, but then also know that there's a lot of prokaryotes that can't do all of this magical stuff. Um, a lot of prokaryotes, they can only do glycolysis. They can just do glycolysis and that's it. Glycolysis, you don't need oxygen to do glycolysis. You don't need um, 
a mitochondria to do glycolysis. And so a lot of prokaryotes, they just stick to glycolysis, which makes a little bit of ATP from glucose. Um, and then you end up with pyruvate and then, um, they don't do the rest of it though. They don't have the machinery and the enzymes to do the rest of it, but there are some who can, and those are called aerobic prokaryotes. Um, so that's one thing to point out. Another thing to point out is that, um, when we talk about cell respiration, we always talk about it in terms of starting with glucose, um, or some simple sugar like glucose going through these different processes, um, and breaking down into CO2. But it's important to point out that you guys use a variety of, um, of molecules to do cell respiration. It's not just sugar and glucose and carbohydrates. So the, the uh, majority, a lot of it is carbohydrates and sugar molecules that your body is using to do cell respiration. Um, it's definitely, um, one of the preferred molecules to do cell respiration with because it does, um, most efficiently and produce a, a, a good amount of ATP very easily. Um, through those processes that we went through in topics two and three. But like this picture points out, there's a lot of other things that can be um, used as part of this pathway. This whole process of cell respiration is it's a it's a very large metabolic pathway. Um, there's a huge series of chemical reactions taking place during glycolysis and pyruvate oxidation and the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. Um, and you you don't have to start with glucose. You can enter the pathway anywhere. Like you don't have to start from the very beginning since it is a metabolic pathway. You can start like in the middle of glycolysis or you can start with pyruvate and go into a pyruvate oxidation in the, the citric acid cycle. And what your body can do, it actually can take, cells can take not just carbs, but they can take proteins and break them down into amino acids. And then there's chemical reactions that can take amino acids and turn them into things, components that can be fed into this metabolic pathway to get some energy from them. Um, and same thing with your fats, your fats, like uh, your triglycerides, which are made of glycerol and fatty acids, those can be broken down too and also be turned into, um, you guys have chemical reactions as part of your metabolism that can turn those things into um, chemicals that are also involved in cell respiration. Um, like glycerol can be turned into G3P, which then can be used to kick off or start doing glycolysis with um, before starting having to start with glucose. Um, our fatty acids can be turned in, they can be broken down into acetyl-CoA molecules, which then can start and do the Krebs cycle. And so you can get energy and you can do cell respiration from other types of molecules, not just sugar is what you guys need to know. Um, and so uh, just know it's a metabolic pathway and other types of macromolecules like proteins and fats can also be um, broken down and turned into things that can enter this metabolic pathway at different steps. Um, and actually fats per gram, um, fat actually has, will produce more energy per gram than um, sugar actually will, carbohydrates. And so there's a lot of chemical energy, a lot of dense chemical energy stored in fats and their triglycerides, um, all those fatty acids. There's a lot of chemical energy in all those bonds um, that can be tapped into. So just know these are things. But um, for the most part, a lot of times it's, it's carbohydrates and simple sugars that are being used during cell respiration alongside some of these other things, supplementing some of your guys' um, uh, energy that's being made during through your metabolism. Um, and then another thing to point out here is, uh, or another important thing to know is that cell respiration is very regulated. So your body isn't doing cell respiration right now as fast as possible all the time. And so all of this is controlled by enzymes and these enzymes, like we learned previous this year, these enzymes are regulated. Um, these enzymes can be activated and inactivated and slow down and inhibited. Um, and those enzymes that make up these different reactions taking place, um, if you're regulating them, you can control how fast cell respiration is taking place in certain cells in your body or at different times, um, depending on the energy demands that are presented to the cells and to organisms. And so one way that um, cell respiration is regulated is through feedback inhibition. Um, we've talked about this before, where you have a, a metabolic pathway, a series of chemical reactions taking place, and the end product of that, that um, metabolic pathway, that, that chemical that you end up making can actually go back and bind to one of the previous enzymes and inhibit those one of the earlier enzymes and um, basically then decrease 
the rate at which that metabolic pathway is taking place. And we talked about how that's actually beneficial um, because that will prevent your body from overproducing a certain thing. So for example, in cell respiration, one of the main things you're making during cell respiration is ATP. You're making ATP during the Krebs cycle, during glycolysis, you're making a bunch of ATP during oxidative phosphorylation. Um, and what's cool about cell respiration is that ATP can actually bind to and inhibit one of the early enzymes used in glycolysis. So it's, I think it's the third enzyme in glycolysis. Uh, uh, glycolysis is 10 different reactions. And one of the early enzymes, this guy right here, phosphofructokinase, it actually can bind to ATP. And when it does, it inhibits this enzyme. And then this enzyme will stop doing this reaction. And if you stop doing this reaction, you're going to stop all these other reactions that are waiting on that reaction to do its part of this metabolic pathway. Um, which uh, um, this is actually a good thing because if your body, this would only happen if your body is accumulating too much ATP. If a, if a cell is accumulating a lot of ATP and there's so much ATP that it's floating around and it randomly bumps into this enzyme, um, that means there must be a lot of ATP in the cell that's not being used. And that means that you're wasting, you're basically wasting your food and you're wasting energy right now, breaking down glucose to doing cell respiration when you already have plenty of ATP and apparently your cell's not using it. So why are you still doing it? So because, but thankfully there's feedback inhibition where ATP can bind to and inhibit those previous enzymes, those, this enzyme right here. And by doing that, it's going to slow down cell respiration because, um, uh, at that point that would be ideal because you're making too much ATP. And then when the ATP levels drop and there's not a lot of ATP in the cell, well, then sooner or later, the ATP that's inhibiting this enzyme is going to fall off. None of this is permanent. And so once the ATP, when there's low levels of ATP, then this metabolic pathway, cell respiration is going to kick up and start going faster. But when there's too much ATP being made, it's going to inhibit and slow down this metabolic pathway. So it keeps it a nice balanced production of cell respiration. Um, at a level at which is needed for the cell without doing it too much. That's what's going on. So just know that that's something that's happening. It's being regulated in your body, um, how fast respiration is happening. And it's not just happening uncontrollably as fast as possible all the time in all your cells. Um, and then the last thing on here is just um, the significance of glycolysis in terms of evolution and um, evidence for evolution. And so glycolysis, that's that first piece um, in cell respiration where glucose is broken down into pyruvate. Um, there's 10 reactions that are taking place there with 10 different enzymes controlling this, this production of pyruvate from glucose and ultimately creating, um, it does create some ATP. It creates a net of two ATP during glycolysis. Um, and that's a, a process, that's a metabolic pathway, that's a sequence of reactions that's basically found in all forms of life on this planet. All forms of life and all forms of, all types of cells on this planet, from prokaryotic to eukaryotic to plants and animals and bacteria, um, all these different types of cells on this planet, one thing that they have in common is they all do glycolysis. Uh, my cells do it, your dog cells do it, the tree cells do it, the bacteria cells do it. And we all have these very similar enzymes that accomplish glycolysis in our cells, the same metabolic pathway, the same sequence of reactions that makes them ATP. And so for that reason, um, it's basically the most common series of reactions that are taking place in, in all life on this planet. Um, and so that means that glycolysis evolved, must have evolved very early on in the history of life on this planet. So whenever life got started on this planet, the very, very first cells to evolve on this planet, which is like two and a half to three billion years ago, um, those cells must have very early on learned and evolved to do glycolysis because we find it in all forms of life that exist today. So that's uh, what this slide is trying to um, explain to you guys. Anyway, that's, that's it for topic, what was this, topic four? Okay, just some random things there to, to point out that you need to know. Um, anyway, thank you guys.